This is part 113 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to export jQuery data tables data to Excel, CSV or PDF, how to copy the data to the clipboard and finally how to see the print preview of the data. So here is what we want to do. We want to include all these buttons on the web page. When I click on save to Excel button, we want to save all this data to an Excel file. When we click on PDF button, we want to export to PDF. When I click on the copy button, we want to copy all this data to the clipboard. And when we click the print button, we want to see the print preview of this data. In the print preview, it doesn't make sense to include all these buttons, the search text box, the paging navigation bar, this status text on the left which says showing 1 to 10 of 21 entries and this text show 10 entries. On the print preview or on the print itself, we just want the data along with its header and footer. To achieve all this, we will use Table Tools plugin for jQuery data tables. To get the Table Tools plugin, visit this URL right here. I'll have this link available on my blog. On this page, when you scroll down, you can see the CDN links for Table Tools, CSS, and JavaScript files. I've already included these links on the web page. So on the web page right here, within the head section, Notice that we have a reference to the core jQuery file itself. We have a reference to the data tables JavaScript file and table tools JavaScript file. In addition to these script files, we also have references to two CSS files, the data tables CSS and table tools CSS. And within our script section, we have the ready function wired up. Within the body section, I have a table element with ID data table and it's got T head and T foot sections. Within the T head section, we've got five TH elements, ID, city, country, and continent. I mean, basically four. We have the same elements within the T foot section. And then within the T body section, we've got some hard coded data. There are 21 rows at the moment. So if we view this page in the browser, this is how the data is rendered at the moment. The data is not displayed using jQuery data tables plugin. Let's display that using jQuery data tables plugin. To do that, within our jQuery ready function, I'm going to use the jQuery ID selector, find the data table, and on that, I'm going to call data tables function. Let's save our changes, reload the page, and now the data should be displayed using jQuery data tables plugin. Let us store the data table instance in a variable, and I'm going to call that variable table. And I'm going to create another variable, and I'm going to call that table tools equals new dollar dot fn dot data table dot table tools and to this table tools function I'm going to pass our data table instance that we have cached in this variable okay and then let's use the table tools variable so table tools dot I'm going to use fn container function. So what is this fn fu container function going to do? Now if you look at these buttons, you know all these buttons are present in a container that this function is going to return. Okay, so what do we want to do with that container? We want those buttons to appear just before this entire data table, right? And to do that, I'm going to use insert before function. And I want to insert that container of buttons just before an element with ID. And the ID that I'm going to use is data table. So that's the ID of our HTML table, underscore wrapper. Now, what is this data table underscore wrapper? We'll understand that in just a bit. For now, let us save our changes reload this web page and look at what is going to happen. Notice that we get those magic buttons, copy, CSV, Excel, PDF, print. Okay. Now at the moment, look at that. When I click the buttons, we don't have the functionality. We'll discuss that in just a bit. But let's now understand what is this hash data table wrapper. Now on this web page, if you launch developer tools by pressing F12 and then click on this magnifying glass and look at this. At the moment, the entire data table is selected. And if you look at where you know the data table is present, it's actually you know 
all the content of the data table is wrapped inside a div element with id data table underscore wrapper. So jQuery injected that div element. So now what we are doing in our jQuery code is we are saying the container that contains our buttons, we want to insert that before that div element with that id. So that's how we get those buttons just before that data table. Okay. So we got those buttons, but the, there is no functionality. We are not able to copy or export data. And that's basically because the table tools plugin rely on flash SWF file to perform those actions. And to get those that flash SWF file, visit this URL right here. Okay. And again, I'll have this link available on my blog. And on this page, when you scroll all the way to the down, you can find that flash SWF file that uh, tables tools plugin require. And if you look at that SWF file, we have got two variations of that. One has this word PDF in it and the other one does not. And the difference between these two files is that if you want to be able to export to PDF, then this file has that capability. The other one does not have the capability. And the other difference is in size. So the one that has the capability to export to PDF uh, is significantly large in size. It's around 56 kilobytes whereas the one without PDF capability is two kilobytes. So in your application, if you really need to export data to PDF, only then use this version of the SDF, SWF file. So in our application, we want to be able to export it to PDF as well. So I'm going to copy that URL. And here, I'm going to specify the options for table tools plugin. And I do that using a JavaScript object. And we have to specify SSWF path. And the value is going to be the CDN length that we have just copied. That's the path for the SWF file that the table tools plugin require. Now, S in front of this SWF path, path um, specifies that it takes a string value. So let's save our changes. Let's reload our web page. And look at this. When I click on copy button, it says copy 21 rows to the clipboard. When we open a notepad and when we press control V, look at that. We get the data from the clipboard onto the notepad. All right. And when I click on print, look at that. I am on print preview. We don't have that search text box. We don't have the paging navigation bar and other data table elements. We just have the header, footer, and the data of the data table. At the moment, it's showing all the 21 rows, right? So when I press escape, I go back to the original page. The print preview is closed. We are back on the original page. Now, let's say for some reason, when you click on this print button, you don't want all the rows of the data table. Instead, you want just the rows on the first page. Okay, so how do we achieve that? We'll look at that in just a bit. But before that, let's say, we want only copy and print buttons. We don't want other functionality on the page. So how do I customize that? So I want only those two buttons, copy and print. To do that, use the other option of data tables, um, I mean, table tools plugin. And that is a buttons. So here, we specify what buttons we want. And a, before the name of the option, specifies that it takes an array value. And here, what we want is copy and print functionality. So let's save our changes, reload this page, and look at that. We only have copy and print functionality now. When we click print, we get all the rows, and that's not what we want. We want just the rows on the first page. So to achieve that, I am going to use a JavaScript object for print, and I'm going to say, so I'm using this option S extends. So I want to extend print button. Okay. And how do I want to extend it? I don't want to show all the rows of the data table on the print preview. I just want the rows on the first page. For that, I'm going to use Boolean show all. And I'm going to set that to false. By default, it is true. So it's showing all the rows of the data table on the print preview. So with this change, let's reload our page. And look at this. When I click on Print Preview, now it's only displaying the rows on the first page, which is 10 rows. 
okay and when we press escape we are back on the original page now let's say we want CSV and Excel as well if that is the case along with copy and print I want CSV and XLS so let's save our changes reload this page and notice that we get CSV and Excel as well now when I click on CSV look at that it gives me .csv extension and when we press data click save and when we go to that folder downloads look at that data.csv and the data is exported to that file similarly when I click on Excel look at that it again uses .csv extension now I don't want .csv extension for Excel I want to use .xls extension now if you want to do that again you'll have to customize that or extend XLS option and to do that we are going to use JavaScript object just like how we have done it for print and I'm going to specify that we want to extend XLS and I'm going to specify S file name option and I'm going to use here star.xls okay so let's save those changes and reload this page and now look at this when I click on Excel now we get .xls extension now let's say you know we want to give a default name to the file for example I want it as data.xls so you can specify it like that data.xls save the changes reload this page and look at this when I click on Excel it gives the name as data.xls and then when I click on save within that folder we have data.xls the extension now is .xls now if you look at the default text it says CSV Excel let's say for some reason I want to change the text on the button as well something like save to Excel if that's the case then you can use the other option S button text and I'm going to set that to save to Excel let's reload our page and look at that it says save to Excel and we still have the same functionality alright let's say we want you know the PDF functionality as well and to get that I'm going to use PDF let's save our changes reload this page and look at that we get the PDF option when I click on PDF and let's say this is data and if we go to the download file we have the PDF file let's go ahead and open that so all the data now is exported to PDF so we have the header we have the data and we have the footer as well now let's say for some reason you don't want footer when you export to PDF if that's the case you can extend this PDF and again the way we do it is by using a JavaScript object and specify the options so we want to extend PDF and boolean footer I don't want to include that within the exported data by default it is true I'm going to set that to false if you don't want to include the header as well you can set B header to false but now let's say we just don't want the footer so I'm going to save those changes reload our page and let's click on this PDF option so PDF and let's say new data let's click save and when we go here new data dot PDF and when we scroll down we should not have the footer alright so table tools plugin CSS and JavaScript CDN links can be found on this URL and in addition to that CSS and JavaScript we know that we also need the table tools flash SWF file you can grab that from this URL right here and the table tools button options documentation that is you know this S extends S file name S button text all these options that you can use with these buttons you know you can find the detailed documentation 
on this URL. I'll have all these links available on my blog. So what are the JavaScript references required on the page? You want the jQuery itself, data tables, and table tools, and the CSS for data tables and table tools. And here is the jQuery code that we just looked at in action. Thank you for listening and have a great day.